depreciation is how capital expenditure is expensed okay okay capital expense now for example all right let's say for example this is a new oven that Domino's bought okay let's say they bought this oven um, this year okay and let's say after you know one year or two years of using the oven this is how the oven looks like you know this looks like a used oven this kind of looks like an unused oven fresh oven right then let's say after like five years or six years or ten years you know they they're using their ovens like crazy and it's all rusted and it's all gone this is how it looks like so this right from this new oven to this old oven is the life cycle of this oven life cycle of this asset the, an, an oven is an asset to Domino's because Domino's owns the oven and the, you know the, the assets help a company make revenue so uh, an oven is an asset and the value of an asset decreases over time and that's not news to you let's say if you bought a car today for three lakhs you know after one a brand new car after one year the, the value of that car is going to be maybe two and a half lakhs after uh, five years the value of that car is probably going to be one lakh that essentially is what depreciation is is that the value that companies realize that the value of a long-term investment decreases over time right this year it's 10,000 next year it's 4,000 another year it's, it's uh, after a few years 500 so the expense in the income statement for a long-term investment like capex is based on how many years an asset is going to produce revenues or earnings for the company okay and just to give you a rough example on how that works is uh, let us say here depreciation all right um, hopefully you're becoming familiar with Excel as we go through these sessions that's the whole point of me building these things in front of you okay uh, so you know get used to uh, using Microsoft Excel uh, quite frequently uh, it, it's going to be immensely helpful so back to our depreciation so let's say in the let's say in the year 2011 okay and let's say 2012 and let's say 2013 all right now uh, let's say in the year 2012 um, Domino's bought an oven. Oven, okay. Oven is five lakhs. Okay, this is not an expense yet. This is just an event that happened in the year 2011, and the event is that Domino's essentially bought an oven which cost five lakhs. Okay. Now, in normal cash accounting, you would just use a file as an expense but we are corporate finance professionals we know that that should not be done what depreciation does is depreciation will figure out okay this oven can probably be used for three years maybe it's five years seven years the management and accountants will decide what that year is and then we will take the value of the oven divided by the number of years over which it is going to provide useful life uh, for the company and we will expense it that way. So this oven expense, this is a cap. This is going to be in the balance sheet right here. Okay. This is, is the balance sheet. This is going to be a capital expense. And on your income statement, this, this is going to be the expense on your income statement. Okay. This is your capital expenditure, capitalized expenditure on your balance sheet, and the, the proportional thing is the uh, expense on income statement, which is your depreciation. But now what is going to happen to your balance sheet as you keep depreciating the value of this asset is, in 2012, is your asset worth the same 5 lakhs? No. The value of the asset is the, is the initial value of 5 lakhs minus the value that it has lost the last year. That is the new value of your asset. Okay, And then next year that is a new value of your of your asset okay so and then you you just keep depreciating the value of the asset until it roughly reaches zero now you see in the next year in 2014 well i the, your, the value of this asset in 2014 is going to be zero right look at that now that's it, zero. The value of the, the, the asset is useless after that. Okay. Now, depreciation is not just used for expenses made on new items. 
if you're also doing maintenance activities on existing items, like maybe in the third year you're spending 50,000 rupees doing some maintenance activities to increase the life of an oven, you will still capitalize that expenditure and you would depreciate it over a period of time. We're going to go back to this Domino's uh, balance sheet right here and you saw that this line is the capital expenditure, this is their depreciation and if you go to Domino's' income statement, right here you should see, right, there you go, you see something called depreciation and amortization. The depreciation of their fixed assets, their equipment is all there. And that is popularly called, uh, depreciation is popularly called a non-cash expense. And, and this is really important. And the reason it is called a non-cash expense is if you look at your income statement, you know, raw material, staff costs, manufacturing costs, finance charges, all that stuff, you're actually paying cash to incur all those expenses. But depreciation is the only thing in this income statement where you're not actually paying cash in the financial period. You've already paid cash a few years back. It is just the residual value of that asset that is being treated as an expense when it goes to your financial statement, which is why to, uh, to, to get to your, you know, real recurring operating income, people, uh, or, or EBITDA, people will generally add back uh, your depreciation uh, and amortization back to your, um, uh, your operating income. But before we do that, we're going to quickly go through what is amortization. Now, as you saw, now, in depreciation, that is a way of expensing tangible objects. Now, for example, when Domino's Pizza buys an oven, it's a tangible object that you can feel and touch. It's a, it's a hardware object. Now, amortization, the concept is the same, where you are making a long-term investment, but you're not expensing everything in the same financial time period. You are expensing it over a period of time. But the difference between depreciation and amortization is that amortization applies to intangible objects. Now, let's look at this example. Now, all of you, you know, I'm sure you know about Pfizer. Pfizer is a multi-billion dollar um, uh, pharmaceutical company. Now, let's say Pfizer invests $1 billion to make this amazing drug, uh, you know, this great life-saving drug. They've invested a $1 billion to make the drug. Now, will they expense all the $1 billion in the same year? No, they won't. What Pfizer will do is Pfizer will figure out what is the lifetime value of this drug. You know, maybe maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, you know, how, how much into the future do they see getting revenue from a drug like this? Now, for the purpose of the example, I mentioned it as like 10 years, 2011 to 2020. Now, So, so in the in that ten year period, every year Pfizer will expense hundred million dollars of the R and D cost that has gone into making that drug. So, so you have a very similar concept here, like depreciation, where you're expensing only a hundred million dollars every year rather than the entire one billion in the first year. But uh, here. The concept applies to an intangible object like a drug. I mean, you, like like R and D. I mean, R and D. It's not tangible at all. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. It is just work that has gone into it. This one billion dollars is probably the salary of the scientists, the office rent, the ingredients used for the experiments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that uh, is the concept of amortization, uh, where you expense intangible items over, over the lifetime of that item. Uh, uh, on your income statement. Now, the concept of depreciation and amortization are extremely important because they are what are called non-cash expenses. Non-cash expenses. Now, they're non-cash because the cash has already been paid up ahead, uh, but every, every financial period, these are just an accounting practice and hence they're non-cash expenses. Now, the reason they're important is they're very important to calculate this metric called EBITDA. EBITDA is nothing but 
earnings before earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization that is basically how prof what is the profit of this company by not considering depreciation and amortization and if investors look at this metric very often to make financing decisions uh, you will explore ebitda in more detail later on uh, but but right now um, uh, you know this kind of suffices the understanding of depreciation thank you